Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So more kind of destabilizing factors as the Chinese Yuan has been allowed to depreciate for 2% a second day, uh, opening up the idea that there could be some sort of currency war in the APAC region where other uh, countries which already have quite a undervalued currency are now feeling threatened by China and uh, because obviously they're devaluing their currency to make their exports more attractive um, to, 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 other, um, to other countries. So you've got the likes of like Malaysia and uh, Thailand and Indonesia, they're all looking now to think, well, we've got to be competitive as well. So slight fears over a global, uh, a global impact as uh, countries begin to escalate this potential currency war. That's exactly what's going on here, um, where the Chinese are trying to artificially make themselves more competitive uh, after a period of trying to add lots of gains um, and capital inflows into the country by having Yuan be able to appreciate. You're probably going to see a lot of money flow out of China now if the Yuan is going to be looking to sell off more. It's down about 4% now from, uh, from Monday's close, uh, with many commentators saying that this is probably only just the beginning of, uh, of, a, of a slightly larger move um, and it might take a little while before the yuan will stabilize. So what we're saying here is the US 30 now trading uh, below 17.361. To be fair, as many commodities that have been hit, uh, especially crude oil, which is now trading below $43. Uh, and it just makes the whole prospect of interest rate hikes and everything else just seems to be a little bit tougher. All the regions there are artificially kind of devaluing their currencies. Um, it kind of just makes it harder again to think about how the US will raise rates to make themselves more uncompetitive as well. But nevertheless, uh, what we are seeing there is uh, the next potential support at 17.034. So then jumping on to the UK 100, you can just see the, the size of that move as uh, UK miners are hit exceptionally hard. Rio Tento down about 3%, um, BHP down, um, copper's at six and a half year lows now. As you know, that the yuan depreciates even further, that means, I guess, the idea being is that that China won't be able to buy as much um, goods with the same amount of money. So that has a big impact right across right across the whole um, stream of asset classes. And what we're seeing there is the UK 100 now trading below potential support, 65.89 below both moving averages, and now we're looking at 64.15 as the next potential support. And we're at the bottom of the range today. With the, Ger with the Germany 30 down already 1.8%, falling on from yesterday's 3% drop, and the UK 100 already down 1.4%, uh, it's looking to be um, quite a negative start to the day. Looking at Japan 25, okay, so dollar yen was at 125.20, now 124.70 is the dollar just kind of loses a lot of momentum altogether. Uh, and you can see that that, uh, that switch around, people buying Japanese yen as a safe haven, gold shooting up because of the potential lack of interest rate, or the, the big question marks over US interest rates again. Um, and that's having a negative effect in Japan 2 to 5. Uh, bearish engulfing pattern firmly in place today, uh, below both moving averages 20, 87 is the next potential support. Uh, and it feels to be uh, that kind of global equity markets are accelerating to the downside at the moment while the market digests uh, this Chinese currency um, devaluation for a second day in a row. So looking at dollar yen, uh, not quite a bearish engulfing pattern, but we are firm at the bottom of today's range. 124.42 is the next potential support. Then that might also coincide with these two dual moving averages as well. So moving on to West Texas crude, uh, trading below 43.30, iron up $42. There's really not a lot of positive fundamentals to look at with West Texas at the moment, especially with China the way that it is just now, and the fear of a massive slowdown. More data, I think factory orders out of Japan, out of China this morning, sorry, uh, was one of it came in at six, the forecast 6.6. .6. This is one of the lowest industrial production figures out of China for a long, long time as well. So there's really a pronounced slowdown taking place right now. Uh, and you can see golds all over the shop. Again, a very volatile session yesterday, pushing higher just now, 11.37. And this is question marks over interest rate hikes when other parts of the world are engaging and devaluing their currencies without cutting rates. It's almost a bit redundant for the US to raise rates so soon as September at this stage. And you can see retail is actually down about 3.5% now giving you a flavor as to uh, how hard this miner is getting hit. So that was uh, that was gold. So finishing up with euro dollar and GBP USD, so euro dollar uh, accelerating one spot 11, trading actually up to that 55 period SMA and above 21 period SMA. MACD is close to crossing the zero line. Other technicals are relatively neutral. This is the, the best momentum that euro dollar has had for some time. 
Now looking at GBP USD, uh, one spot 56 as ever. Uh, the moving averages are flattening out, same with the MACD and everything else. Uh, just gives you a bit of a flavor about where we are. Um, until we get above 156, it's going to be hard to get that excited by cable. So economic data-wise, we do have employment claims in the UK, industrial production for the Eurozone, and of course our crude oil inventory data. And then going on to Wednesday, it's got a lot more stuff there. You've got your CPI uh, and US retail sales. That'll be a big one for tomorrow as well. Uh, and that kind of rounds up your Thursday, and I think we already covered Friday yesterday, but GDP from Germany, CPI from the Eurozone, and uh, PPI from the US. So quite a lot of the interest rate sensitive figures coming out of the US, and people will be watching that quite closely to see how strong they actually are in the backdrop of what's happening elsewhere in the world. So as ever, guys, keep your eyes on the chart forum, make insights part of your layer going forward, and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.